single morning at 5 30 my phone would ring steve this is john walker how you doing man it's gonna be a great day how you feeling yeah john i'm asleep man hey he said every time i call you i've called you 37 days in a row and you keep answering the phone like something's wrong he said man when you gonna change your attitude he said when you wake up in the morning man you got a bad attitude which pretty much explains why you've been having a lot of bad days he said man i hate that about you man because you're such a cool dude you got so much potential he said man i'm sorry to bother you next morning i'm damn near sitting up in the bed hello hey steve it's john walker i said hey john what's happening man what's going on with you baby i said it's steve harvey man he said steve how's it going i said man i'm having a great day man i'm having a great day john man you don't believe it man i got some great stuff gonna be happening he said man you my man click and he hung up there's only one way you succeed long term. Anybody can get lucky, do something for a period of time. But real success comes when you do more for others than anybody else. What is the key to greatness? What's the key to self-esteem? What is the key to receiving great respect? What is the key to wealth and abundance? And here's the answer that was given. Find a way to serve many people. Find the ways and means, start rendering service. The more you serve, the greater your fortune. Here was one of the best, John Kennedy on his inaugural all those years ago. Here's what he said, don't ask. John said, don't ask what the country can do for you. What could I do for my country? See, that's the whole turnaround in philosophical thinking. By asking, you receive so little. By serving, you receive so much. Finding ways to serve. That's the key to wealth and greatness. Then here's the next one. I heard Zig say it over 40 years ago, Zig Ziglar. If you help enough people get what they want, you can have everything you want. Underline the word everything. That's what was intriguing to me about this sentence. Now, having said all of that, let me see if I can tie it back together. I believe that you can get everything in life you want if you'll just help enough other people get what they want. If you're selling a product that solves a problem, then you're helping someone else get what they want, which is the solution to the problem, so you get what you want and what you deserve. If you can train, enthuse, inspire, motivate your people to be successful, then your rewards are gonna be greater. You can get everything in life you want if you will just help enough other people get what they want. Ladies and gentlemen, giving creates energy in ourselves and in others have you ever helped a blind person go across the street you know just you know held the door for somebody an elevator i mean don't you have a good feeling inside like i done good how many of you get a good feeling inside would you do something good for somebody see we're really giving to ourselves when you are giving you are giving to yourself there's a principle underlying the concept of giving the energy flowing through us as we do and we are able to reap so much from life as a result of our giving do you know to the degree that you are giving to that degree determines how much you enjoy life how meaningful your life is emmanuel Kant in the book called critique of pure reasoning he says sometimes we must give out of a sense of oughtness a policeman in Washington, D.C. was working one of his patrol areas and he came up to a car and he saw a figure slumped over the steering wheel and he saw a 14 year old boy with a bullet through the back of his head. And He said something ought to be done. We're losing too many young people. Went home. He had like several thousand dollars worth of exercise equipment. He rented a place. He started bringing the kids in to get them involved in taking care of their bodies and an athletic activity. 
getting them involved in entrepreneurial ventures. And now these kids have started their own business. They have a little shopping center and they have commercials on radio and I'm going to be going there doing some training with them. Because of that event that I ought to do something. There will be a voice telling you that you'll be wasting your time and wasting your effort. I say, don't listen to it. Listen to that still small voice that says, I can do something. We ought to do it. I strongly believe that as we begin to look toward the future, whatever you want to do, if you get up in the morning out of a sense of oughtness and decide that I am an opening for the universe, and each day we get up, we make it our personal business to make a difference in those areas that we're concerned about. When you're in a position where you own what you're about and you know what you're here to deliver, and you deliver it on a significant scale, then you have an opportunity to really experience not only success, but fulfillment. And my life was completely changed because when I was 11 years old, we had no money and no food. And we gotten used to that, but it was Thanksgiving, which makes it more emotional. But it profoundly changed me because that day something changed my life and it was somebody simply coming and delivering food. And it wasn't a happy moment for my father. Pretty painful moment. And the door happens and I go open the door and there's this tall guy standing there. And he said, is your father here? And I said, just one moment. And my father came to the front door begrudgingly. When he saw the man, he got very angry. And he said, you know, we don't take charity. And he went to slam the door. And he said, sir, this is not charity. Everybody has tough times. Please accept this gift. My father got even more intense and started saying, I don't accept charity. And this time the man put his foot there and it bounced off of it. He looked at my father and said, don't let your family suffer because of your ego. My father didn't know what to do. He grabbed the food, he slammed it down and slammed the door. Everything in our life is controlled by three decisions. The first one is, what are you going to focus on? And that day, my father focused clearly on the fact that he had not taken care of his family. And whatever you focus on, you're going to feel. Thinking something horrible is going to happen, you experienced the pain of that failure, that challenge in your life, and then it never ever happened. Who's had this experience? Say, I. Because whatever you focus on, you'll feel. Write it down. Focus equals feeling, because if you start to take control of your focus, you take control of your life. The second decision you make is what does it mean? As soon as you look at something, think about something, focus on it, you go, what does this mean? Is this the beginning or the end? Is God trying to hurt me or trying to challenge me? Or is this nothing to do with God? I was just being a lazy bastard. If you think it's the end of a relationship, are you gonna behave the same way as you think it's the beginning of a relationship? I'll give you a clue. If you want a relationship to last, if you think it's coming to the end, do what you did in the beginning and there won't be an end. The meaning we associate to things controls our entire lives. It's the only thing we can control our lives. We can't control events. You can focus on something, you make yourself crazy. You can focus on something that makes yourself great. So if you let someone else take control of your focus, your life will be in someone else's hands. And if you and I want to look at the quality of our life, there's only way to find it. How do you feel every day? If every day of your life you got a billion dollars and every day you feel guilty, by the way, nothing worse than an angry rich man or woman, isn't there? You just want to slap them, don't you? But if you got a billion dollars and you're angry and you're pissed off and you're guilty all the time, what is the quality of your life? But if the meaning is it's the end, if the meaning is you don't care, whatever meaning we come up with, that affects the third decision, which is what am I gonna do? You can be miserable no matter what you have and you can be euphoric, having nothing. Now, if money becomes your God, you got a problem. You'll never have enough. And that's shaped by what we do. And what people do is based on their emotions and also their role models. That success does not mean taking, that success can mean truly growing and giving. My father that day decided what to do was, if I failed and I've been worthless to my family, I must leave. And he did. Years later, I got the benefit of it because out of all those experiences and all that pain, that day I made three different decisions. Decision number one is, I wanna focus on the fact there's food, what a concept. But the most powerful thing to change my life was meaning. I said, what does this mean? My mother had always said, nobody gives a shit. 
nobody cares. And that day I had physical evidence. Those you bringing food, I want you to know that's not just food. That's called love for someone. I realized that my worst day of my life was my best day. Because out of every tragedy, out of every pain, it only gets healed when we find a deeper meaning. And I realized I wouldn't have been there that day. I wouldn't have that hunger to help somebody else if I hadn't had the hunger in my own soul at one point missing. But I want you to think about what's going to create meaning for you. Because money by itself won't do it. Impact will. Do it because research shows when it comes to money, buying things will never make you happy. Never. Now, if you don't give a dime out of a dollar, you're not going to give a hundred million out of a billion ever. Don't kid yourself. It's the place to start wherever we are. And if you do, I think you can find there's enormous enjoyment in that process.